Right, so, just had a phone call. Fence on the way. Off to McDonald's for tea. I think it's getting a bit full, that trailer. Good morning, we've got a tractor arriving today. Fingers crossed. There's some rape getting swathed. To make it a lot easier on the combine, um, rape needs swathed or sprayed. So swathing is basically cutting it, so it's not connected to the soil anymore. Can't get moisture, it dies, or you spray it off. So we spray it off, neighbor there swaths it. Oh, by the way, anyone that's interested, we're selling all those pallets, two pound a pallet. We now have full pad of concrete. The marble top. So it's poured in three sections. First one, the one I'm standing on right now. Second one in front of the door. And then in the middle there, you can see it's a bit darker, there's a bit more moisture in it. That just got poured yesterday. All the expansion joints have already been cut. Just because it's been so warm, it's dried out quick. So they cut them just in the evening of pouring this section. It saves them coming back in the morning with a big crack through it. It's the Doug's nuts, it's looking really good. Um, we've done right up to these walls so that we can uh, dump piles of wood chip or dump wheat if we're kind of the wet shed is full of wheat we've got space to dump got a wall to push against and um, someone did suggest that don't push too hard, too hard on these because they're just holding on via these studs rather than pushing the other way against the beams but most likely the other side of that uh, wall will be full of grain anyway so there'll be weight pushing against it the ideal scenario is kind of three weeks after it's poured um, until you run on, on it with heavy machinery but um, this piece in front of the door it's been a week since it was poured we'll be cutting barley probably in one week's time so there's a trailer in there we need to get we'll just have to come across there in the door grab the trailer and then we out again that'll be fine though the trailer the trailer's empty won't be too heavy it'll be fine Semi-regularly the cattle start to go off the pellets or they, they push out the pellets while they get to the barley so if you scoot them all up, chuck them back on top, they generally eat most of them. They only start to go off them once they're kind of not far off reaching full size because these cattle aren't far away from being ready to go. Still got a few over there that are ready to go. Right, forklift has a nail in the tyre so I'm just waiting to go and sort that out. Right, got some vehicle troubles this morning. Got a, a key here that's fallen apart. I've just fixed that with um, some JV Weld, two-part epoxy, really strong. Right, this is a reamer, and you're meant to, when you pull out the nail from a tire, you're meant to use this in and out the hole to kind of shape it and put it to that size. But it's really hard work doing that. So, oh, I've just landed that on the key, idiot. I usually just do it with a drill. It's never failed yet. Ah, they'll break. Nail wasn't penetrated through, wasn't leaking air. I've soaked it all in soapy water, soaked the valve. Everything's fine, but it was definitely a bit soft, so pumped up and see what happens now. Right, the cab is needing a red out, it's clotty. Right, it's a lot better. It's not perfect by any means, but it's better. This mat still needs to go in, but I've got a hold of it here. I power washed it and it's kind of like a, it has got foam in it, so it's soaked up the water. So I'm going to put it in the boiler room so it dries out. But that was long overdue. It's been uh, manky for a, a while. Chuck that over there. Roasting in here, because there's the boiler, wood chip boiler. There's the wood chip hoppers on the other side of that wall. Bought a new pressure gauge the other day, so I'm just changing the fitting on the end of it. We're in action. It's got a wee clip thing, so you don't need to hold it on. More for like tractor tires and things like that when holding it on heavy for ages till it pumps up, but seems to be working anyway. I'm sitting on it, so I better not put it up to too many PSI or else I'll be up there. This will be getting serviced soon, just pre-harvest. Also trying to get a price on the seat base. Phone them there, they're gonna get back to me on the price of it. And then that's good to go for harvest. Tires on it are pretty much ready for getting replaced. So yeah, you can see they're a bit past it, but we'll get one more harvest out of it. They wear the most at harvest time because they're on the concrete running back and forward with a lot of weight in the bucket. 
So we'll just try and get one more harvest, this harvest out of them, and then we'll replace them after that. Don't know whether to go for kind of the kind of industrial spec ones, not the agri style. That forklift doesn't do any field work, really, um, but it will get swapped to yard number two in a few years' time. And we'll replace the one at yard number two, and the new one will come here. So we're better off here with one with kind of commercial tires or industrial, whatever you call them. Laurie's here for some pallets, the blue ones, Chet, because the blue ones are technically property of Chet. So every so often they come in and collect them all. <laughs> Perfect time in the first rain for about a month. <laughs> you two are dry. Yes, are. Right, I yard number two. I didn't have any grub for the cattle this morning, so grabbed a couple of buckets and if along here, get them fed. Anyway, these two are the lucky ones. Right, all. Just had a phone call. Fence on the way. Freddy, Emily, are you excited for the tractor? Yeah! Here it comes, perfect timing, it's how in the rain. Yeah, it is, it's coming. Tractor! Here it comes, here it comes. Oh, yeah, belter. I've just been in the cab for about an hour, going through various bits and bobs, of which I've forgotten 80% of what he's told me already about. Too many things to remember, I'll just have to use it and figure it out. Cheese! Oh, yeah, beauty. We have a fent, finally. I'll run through a couple of bits with it, what we've ordered, what we spec on the tractor. And then just over the next while, I'll show you more bits of it. I don't want to do a half hour video on it. So, fent, 718 Vario, so 180 horsepower, uh, Vario transmission, is sitting on 650 by 65 by 42s on the rear, 540, 65, 30s on the front. It is looking really shiny. That's what they were at this morning, is taking the wax off, comes with a wax in transport. Said that the other day, um, because it's on a boat and salty water, wax basically all over the thing. So they've washed it and polished it this morning and it's arrived nice and shiny. Back end, um, so we've gone for a hydraulic top link. This is the first time we've had a hydraulic top link on anything. Just think it's a bit safer and crack on and we'll get one. Downside to this is it takes up a spool position and also the hitch. So how we've kind of dealt with that, we didn't want to lose too many spools. There's four spools on it. So the green spools are basically linked via this valve. Um, so there's green spools here and the same spools on the front end. And you've got this valve here, which you open up to release the oil flow to the hitch, so Bill Bennett hitch. So now if I spool the green spools inside, it will move the hitch, close that valve position, and that's the hitch locked, and it spools to here or to the front. That also means we cannot have something on the front spools and on these green spools here. Otherwise, if you spool it inside the cab, it will um, put oil to here and the front or take oil from here and the front. The only thing that we've got on the front end that needs a spool is uh, the stone grape. It's got a hydraulic top link, so we need a spool on the front so we wouldn't be able to use this green one at the back. And also the discs that go in the front when the drill's on, but the drill only uses two spools, which we've got two spare here. So we're fine for spools. And worst case scenario, you can just take off the top link spool if you need. It's got loads of neat features on it. I'm not gonna go through all of them. I, I was just thinking, oh, I'll start here and tell you all these and what they do and what this does, and it's like, it's going to take far too long. So, so that's a wee bit on the back there. The tires it's on, the actual tractor is. I'll show you in the cab as well. And also, it's a Power Plus. Um, so you get power, you get Power Plus, you get Profi, and you get Profi Plus. This is a Power Plus. Profi is just more spec'd out and more bells and whistles. We didn't get more bells and whistles, but it's got plenty. Two things that I've been told not to do is if you need to reset the computer, make sure the door is shut. This is purely so I remember and don't do it myself. And only change it from field mode to road mode or road mode to field mode when you're stationary. Anyway, I'm going to shift it outside. If I can remember how to shift it, we're off. Smooth. Oh, I'm like a wee child at Christmas. Get this trailer yoked up. It's got a 
auxiliary tank purely for hydraulics to outgoing implements so you're not sharing the same oil with your trailers that you are in the transmission quite like that i'm just yoking up this trailer obviously it's hydraulic brakes no no air brakes on that trailer so you have to go in to depressurize the hydraulic brakes parking brake on yeah operator seat yeah i'm in the seat fault clothes no i'm flipping hope not right should be able to plug them in now he showed me where that button was, but I just spent another five minutes finding it. Finding it. Hopefully the brakes are now plug in. Ah, yes. I've learned something today. We're in action. We've got a trailer yoked up. Let's now see if we can drive the thing along the road. Right, go on then. Put it down below. Out of 10, do you like the look of the fin? I do. Anyway, last few bits of wood we've got lying about. Fill that trailer up and I'll get it emptied. I think it's getting a bit full that trailer or do you prefer that also just ordered the seat base for that and uh, the one that's all knackered and goosed ordered a new one for it just it's 140 quid though but anyway they're out on tuesday they're going to service it and then uh, chuck that seat in as well anyway that's the fen arrived finally i can't milk the thumbnails anymore this will be the last yeah, i'll maybe try one or two more but where's the new tractor where is it cheers hamilton group the stickers up there so they delivered it this morning it looks that Doug's nuts. Happy with it. We'll see how we go on for the next few years with it. Bit of a change from what we're used to. Time will tell whether it was worth it. Look at that. Delivered with two bars of diesel. If we hadn't sent away the other tractor with no diesel in it, then uh, I'd be a bit annoyed with that. Right, we're off to the races. I'll tell you what, you get an amazing view all round. Windows really, really tall. It's got a bit of curve at the top. Hopefully we've got enough diesel to get uh, along the road and back. So with these, you can uh, basically drive with the pedal or you can use this uh, joystick and nudge it forward and backwards to slot, uh, speed up, slow down. People who are watching who drive with this joystick, what do you generally stick to? It's just going to take a bit of time to get used to. Um, different way of driving, different joystick controls, different everything really. There'll be guys out there right now fencing, saying it's really easy. It will be easy once we figure it all out, it's just getting to the bottom of all the other as all the aspects of it. So I'm on the yellow and green on the spool valve and set these to spool whatever you want. Put the yellows the yellows up there. Chuck the reds down there for now. I think the red's on the hydraulic top link. Right, so now my green should be lifting the trailer. Yeah, we're in action. I'm just checking what flow I've got going through the spools. I'm just checking I've brought them all back. When you first set this up, they're at 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, like full oil flow. So I just dialed them right back so that I don't blow anything. And to be honest, that's at 36%. So I can crank it up a wee bit, but it doesn't need to go too much faster. Then that'll open the back door. Right, been out here for 10, ten minutes now trying to get the back door open. Draw the pipe keeps um, jumping out. I can't work it out. Why this trailer will not tip? Seems more like a trailer issue, but I can get the bed to tip no bother, but I cannot get the back door open. I've tried different spools, I've tried swapping things, I've tried upping the flow rates, lowering the flow rates. The pipe just wants to pop out every time. It's like, just not getting hold of it. Ugh. I have no idea why it wasn't working, but it seems to be moving now. This is GPS enabled, by the way. Um, we run the GPS on our, all of our tractors now. It's a Novotel system with RTKF net signal. So RTKF net, they provide signal for our other two tractors. So we went with them for this tractor as well. RTKF net mounted a mast on our shed. It's like a data collection center and in return, um, we get kind of, we get one free signal and the rest are normal. So price wise. So that's why we're with RTKF net. Also find them good. Like that's all they do is then um, signal and GPS stuff. So they're focused fully on that. So they've sorted it out before it actually arrived on farm. So all the, all that's set up and ready to go. Although seeing that, it's not getting good signal at the moment, so something's not right. Taxi. Also, I've got a hole. What's that? Is that a mole? Is that a mole hole? Bandits. Off to McDonald's for tea. I figured this out when you're on joy joystick mode, when you're easing back, don't just hold it, you just kind of tap in it and it drops it a few i think it drops it 0.5 of a k every nudge so if you're holding it obviously rattles it up to speed if you do that going backwards it's a bit jerky so you just tap it and that slows it a bit i think cheers for watching there's the long-awaited fed fent it's finally arrived
Cheers Rory for getting it. I think he's glad it's arrived and it's getting less chip. You'll see it over the next um, 10 years maybe. Who knows how long we'll have it. I could hide neath the wings of the bluebird as she sings.